In this video, we're going to have a look at how best to define exact values of sine, cos, and tan of particular uh, angles. Now, you all have to know how the sine wave, cosine wave, and tan wave behave between uh, 0 and 360. So there's the sine wave there, uh, there's the cosine wave, and there we have the tan wave down there. Now, you need to just know how it behaves and also to note how it behaves at particular values of x. So you should know, for example, that sine 90 is 1, sine 180 is 0, cos 270 is negative 1, cos 3, uh, sine 360 is uh, 0. And similarly for cos, um, cos 0 is 1, cos 90 is 0, cos 180 is negative 1, and so on. So you really just need to um, know these and for identifying how um, the graph behaves at values of x such as 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. You just picture the graph in your head and say what, it, what, the, what the exact value is. So you know that sine of 0 is 0, sine of 90 is 1, sine of 180 is 0, sine 270 is negative 1, and sine 360 is 0. All right? And again, if you picture the cosine wave, um, so it starts off cos of 0 is 1, cos of 90 is 0, cos of 180 is negative 1, cos of 270 is 0, and cos of 360 is 1. And for tan, uh, tan of 0 is 0, um, co uh, tan of 90 is undefined, uh, tan of 180 is uh, 0, tan of 270 is not defined, and tan of 360 is 0 as well. So whenever you're asked to define or to say uh, what the exact value of sine, cos, or tan for 0, 90, 180, 270, or 360 um, is, you have to just use your knowledge of how these uh, cycles are, how they behave between 0 and 360. There's no substitute for just memorizing how these behave at these key values. Now you'll also be expected to be able to give the exact value of sine, cos, and tan of angles such as 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, which is not so easy to, to just retain and remember because you can't uh, do that by just looking at the graph. So what I'd like to do is show you how best to remember what these are. We're going to take a square, which is one unit by one unit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to split it in half. Okay? Now when you split it in half, diagonally like so, and focus on this part, the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle that has been uh, formed by Pythagoras is root 2. Okay? And we're going to focus on that, and we're going to also note that because uh, our angles were all right angled, that because I've now split it in two, that these two angles here and here will be 45. Okay? So we'll, we'll look at that in a wee while and we'll see what we can say about um, sine, cos, and tan of 45. If we also take an equilateral triangle this time, where each of the sides are two units long, because it's equilateral, each of these angles will be 60. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it, okay? I'm going to split it down the middle, and that will leave me with a triangle which is right-angled like so. Now, because it was right, uh, because it was uh, equilateral, all three angles were 60, this one, this one, and this one. But because I have hafted down the middle, this angle here will now be 30, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus my attention on the yellow triangle, and now we can say that the base of the yellow triangle is half of 2, which is 1. And by Pythagoras, focusing on this right angle triangle here, I can say that its height is root 3. Okay? So what we've got are two triangles. All right? And if we recall what we said, um, this one here was formed by splitting uh, a square, which was one unit by one unit in half. This one here was formed by taking out um, 
equilateral triangle, splitting that in half, and their angles are 60 and 30. And if you can recall how we constructed these triangles, that's the easiest way to carry into the exam with you knowledge of exact values of 30, 60, and 45. It's far easier than trying to remember a table of values. If all you remember is, for example, that sine 30 is a half, you're able to construct all of this. Okay, so let's have a look at just extracting the information just using SOCATOA basic trigono uh, right angle trigonometry knowledge to uh, identify the exact values of sine, cos, and tan for these angles. So if we look first of all at uh, when we we'll look at this triangle here, when uh, the angle is 45, sine 45 is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's 1 over root 2. Cos 45 is adjacent over hypotenuse, which again is 1 over root 2. And tan 45 is opposite over adjacent, which is 1 divided by 1, which is 1. And that's it. Now for 30, that's my opposite down there. That's my adjacent. That's my hypotenuse. So we can say sine 30 is opposite over hypotenuse, which is a half. Cos of 30 is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is root 3 over 2. And tan of uh, 30 is opposite over uh, adjacent, which is 1 over root 3. OK. Now for 60, when we are considering the angle 60, this is the opposite. This is the hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent. So sine of 60 is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So root 3 over 2. Cos of 60 is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1 over 2. And tan of 60 is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is root 3 over 1, which is just root 3. So using these triangles, we've been able to fill our table, and these are the exact values of 30, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, uh, where we're looking at sine, cos, and tan. Okay? Now, you'll also be expected to use this information to find the exact values of angles which are um, not uh, acute, okay? But which are related to each of these acute angles, all right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to consider our cast diagram. <clears throat> so we're going from 0 to 90 to 180 to 70 and back round to 360. And we know that all of them are positive in this quadrant. Sine of angles in this quadrant are positive. Uh, tan of angles in this quadrant are positive, And cos of angles in this quadrant are positive. Okay? So, what we have to do, first of all, is decide what is the related angle to each of these, and also then decide on where, what, uh, whether our answers can be positive or negative. Okay? And the way you would decide on what the exact related uh, acute angle is, is you just ask yourself, how far away am I in each of these angles from either 180 or 360? Okay? How far away are you from either one of these uh, values which appear on the horizontal part of your cast diagram. So cos 300 is obviously, well, 300 is 60 degrees away from 360. Now, for 300, we are in this quadrant, okay? So we know our answer is going to be positive, okay? So I know that my answer to this question is going to be positive. I know that it's going to be, if I just write it over here, it's going to be positive and it's going to be the same as cos 60, okay? Now, cos 60, um, if you recall, was um, a half. So we just say that it is 1 over 2, okay? Positive 1 over 2. For 225, we are in this quadrant. And it's only 10 of angles in this quadrant which are uh, positive. So this we know because the sine of 225 is going to be negative. Now, What's the related acute angle? Well, I'm 45 degrees away from 180. Okay, so there's my solution there. I'm 45 degrees away from 180. So the related acute angle is 45. And we can say then that it is negative sine 45. And if you recall from your triangle, uh, 
what you've got is negative one over root two. Okay, so it might not do any harm actually to sketch our triangles just so we can remember. So we had the one that came from the square. where our angle was 45. And we also had the one that came from the equilateral triangle. Like so, okay. Now for tan 330, what can we say? Uh, tan 330 is in this quadrant. Now it's gonna be negative because it's only cosine of angles in this quadrant which are positive. And the related acute angle is going to be 30 because we are 30 degrees away from 360. So it's the same as negative tan of 30. Now what is tan 30? Tan 30 is opposite over adjacent. So it's negative 1 over root 3. Okay. And for cos 120, 120 is in this quadrant between 90 and 180. Um, cos of angles in here will be negative. My related acute angle, how far away am I from 180? I'm 60 degrees away. So it's negative cos 60. And cos 60 is, as we had before, it's a half. So this time I have an answer of negative a half. Okay. And finally, tan 240. 240 is in this quadrant. Now tan of angles in this quadrant are positive. So we know our answer is going to be positive. How far away is 240 from 180? It's 60 degrees away. So it's positive tan 60. And I look at my triangle, tan 60 opposite over adjacent is root 3. So my answer is just positive root 3. So that's how you would uh, use triangles to uh, come up with exact values of um, angles such as 30, 60, and 45, and also how you could then use these to find the exact values of angles which are greater than uh, 90. Okay, so I hope that was helpful.